could you just explain a little bit about everything that goes into an F1 test day? What are the teams looking to gain from it? And how did you approach that for your first time as a driver? Um, so my tests were straight line speed testing and, and other testing that we were doing. So they weren't on an actual track, unfortunately, but but it was behind the scenes work that um, the, the team and the drivers required at the time. The, the two drivers were Nico Rosberg and Kazuki Nakajima. Um, and I guess they weren't available. So I, I slotted in and did, did a few tests for them, which was um, quite extraordinary. But yeah, in terms of preparation for myself, it, there were, I think we did two or three days on the simulator uh, at the uh, at the factory um, at Grove. Um, and that was very useful for, for me because you've got, to, you've got to remember, I'd only done a, um, a, 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 a one GP2 test, so um, to so suddenly jump from British F3 to a Formula One car was was a big jump, and that was really useful for me to do those those couple of days on the sim uh, in terms of learning the the steering wheel layout and a few other bits and pieces like that. It was um, you know I, I remember leaving with a whole manual of a, a car manual, uh, which I studied uh, obviously a huge amount after that, and um, that really helped me in preparation. Um, but I don't think anything prepares you for turning up to up to the the, the the venue that we used and suddenly seeing I think it was four or five trucks there, um, thirty personnel, um, and one car, and you're the driver. I mean, that, 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 it's quite an extraordinary feeling actually, and um, one I absolutely adored. But um, yeah, the, what I think I, it, there's nothing secretive about it now. But one of the main reasons for the test was actually or two main reasons that one was this was the end of 2008 where the regulations were changing massively if you look at the 2008 car you'll see a slightly narrower front wing a, a chunky rear wing um, and the height of the, of the wings were, were quite different from what became the 2009 cars which were very wide front wing and very narrow rear wing I was just going to say, we, we have one behind you now, just for, for reference, there is a 2009 yeah, so car. 2009 car, you, yeah, you see what exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, uh, the, the front wing was probably two thirds of that that width. Um, so yeah. a big, big change in the aero regulations um, at that time. And as always, it was to promote um, better racing, um, because I think in 2007, eight, I think people would I thought, you know, we can try and do better, better than this. It's the, the age old story about let's try and get better overtaking. Um, and I, I, yeah, obviously the car behind me, the Braun, really stole the march on that with a, the double diffuser and a couple of other things they had on the car, um, which we didn't think of at Williams, obviously. Sure. Um, but um, what we were doing at the time was um, developing a Kerr system. Um, which was, I believe, the only flywheel Kerr system on the grid. And um, that was really interesting because it was something that was, yeah, it was groundbreaking technology. Um, and when I say a flywheel system, it was it was regaining the kinetic energy of the car and putting it into the flywheel, which was right behind the driver's back, um, where the, the fuel tank would have been in it if it was a normal size fuel tank at the time. And I I can't remember exactly the RPM this thing was doing, but I I, I reckon it was. I'm sure they said something like 80,000 RPM, you know, and, and wow. may have even gone higher than that. So um, it was quite interesting because I remember sitting in the car um, with the gantry overhead ready to go out onto the onto the runway. And um, uh, suddenly there's a light above me, orange flashing light, as soon as the curves are starting to be fired up in the garage. And you can feel it behind your back. It's, you know, it's whirring away. It's going quicker and quicker and quicker. And they told me that if there's any issue, um, don't step out the car, jump out the car, because the last mm. thing you want to do is earth yourself, you know. <laughs> and that, it was at that point I realised why I got the job and not uh, Nico Rosberg, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, no such problems. And, um, you know, it was really interesting to, to develop that um, with them. And, and I believe that same technology is now on a lot of London buses, a lot of, um, of the underground trains and a few other uses as well. And um, I think that a lot of that has gone into some Porsche systems as well. So a lot of the technology uh, that we were developing then, it, it's quite exciting and it's quite um, fun to know that it's had other uses that have, that have helped in the world.